Today's episode is sponsored by the Christian Standard Bible. The goal of the CSB is to be faithful to the original languages without sacrificing clarity, all the while maintaining both accuracy and readability. With beautiful designs and multiple study Bible options, everyone, from adults to teens to children, can find a CSB Bible that they enjoy. Learn more at csbible.com. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. This is Mark Hyde. And Chris Fuller. And on today's episode of Real Talk Christian, we're talking about Christians and guns. Seems like many Protestant evangelical Christian days are all about their Second Amendment and the right and ability to own firearms. But how should Christians think about guns? Fuller, you ready to have this conversation? Pew, pew, let's go. <laughs> Hey, Fuller. Yes, sir. How come a stormtrooper never had a girlfriend? How come? Because he always missed a shot. Ah! <laughs> pew, 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 pew. I came up with that right here on the fly. <laughs> you went pew, pew, and I'm like, that sounds like pew, a little pew, pew, like, pew. stormtrooper, bro. <laughs> so, are, you're, are you, you're a big Star Wars fan, Heck right? Yeah, I am. I think we talked about like which ones you love, which ones you... I, we did that recently. <sighs> yeah. It was not like... I, I don't know. It, it, it was recent, but okay. Ten episodes ago? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. So here's here's a fun question for you. Because a lot yeah. of times, I should say, do you like Indiana Jones uh, movies yes. too? Da, 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 Would you rather watch Indiana da, Jones da, da, or Star Wars? Da, da. Ooh, you, We're playing this or that apparently right off the bat. You are not the Rascus. <laughs> Would you rather watch an Indiana Jones or Star Wars? Oh. OG Star Wars if you want. Okay. If it had to come to the prequels, episodes one, two, and three, I would say Indiana Jones. No, no, I'm not talking prequels. I'm talking the good ones. If I have to go four, five, and six, yep. I would choose Star Wars. If I had to go seven, eight, nine, Rogue One, all, all the them, other ones, I would say Indiana Jones. See, I would say Indiana Jones for all of them. I love Indiana Jones, but Raiders of the Lost Star. I love Temple the of Doom's a little. That was a little spooky when I was a little kid. That was a little spooky when I was a little kid. A little bit. But what was what was the third Indiana Jones? Not 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 the Skull one. Last Crusade. There's Last Crusade, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom. That's what I'm thinking. Last Crusade. That was the one with uh, trying to find the Ark of the Covenant. No, right? No, no. Or the um, that was the, the Raiders of the Lost. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Well, obviously, Lost Ark. Was that about the um, that was uh, the Holy Sepulcher? Yeah, it was like Indiana Jones. It starts off Indiana Jones on the train, like right. They're trying something. to find the cup, the yeah, chalice, right? right. Yeah. I, I get that Holy in, in da Vin- the Holy Grail thing. I get that in the Da Vinci Code kind of yeah. stuff. I know it's a chalice. It's a cup chalice. that you just drink at the last supper. The best part, though, have you ever watched the making of like the Raiders of the Lost Ark when like they all the Nazis melt when they open the ark? Like the concept behind they how they did that and got no. that shot. Oh, it's phenomenal. You got to look it up. I, really? it's, it's too long to explain, but you got to go look it up. It's awesome. And it's old. It's school. basically it's like old, old school. It's CGI. basically like no, it's not even CGI. It's like wax and like they did fake blood inside this like wax, and then they melted it with flames, and that's where the melting came from. So they legit melted because they were... Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Fun facts with Fuller. Fun facts with Pew Pew. Well, so <laughs> since we've already done this or that, should we just lean into it and just do some more this or that? Let's what do you think? Just, let's just do this or Let's that. just do this right now. Let's yeah. just do you it. You want to pull it up? Let's I'll, pull it up. I'll pull it up. I'm, I'm in the mood. This or that. All right, hang on. I got to get through the uh, commercials here. Whoa. Jeez, I thought we already went through the commercials. Wuduku was trying to get me. Okay, would you rather have a dream, your dream house or your dream car? Um, do I do do I have to pay a mortgage or no? All we'll, the other we'll, we'll say free for both house house. Now, what would be involved in your dream house? My dream house uh-huh. would be on a lake in the mountains, and it'd be like a big log cabin. Style. I love how yours is more about the scenery. Mine's more about. I just want someone to clean it. <laughs> oh, a self cleaning house. house. You put the dishes in the sink. Oh, how dope would that be? You're like, all right, I have to put the dishes in the sink. You come back, you're like, yo, it's clean. Yeah, they did something like that. It's called the Jetsons. Or have you actually have you ever seen Smart House from Disney and then like it turned into a real person and they like locked the family in the house, protect it? That's yes. like OG Disney Channel yes. movie. Well, they also redid it with the new Mickey on Disney Channel or the Disney app. They did a Mickey one where it was like a smart house and yeah, it was a playoff of that. Anyways, eighty three percent of people's house, you mean? 
the new Mickeys. I don't know what they're called. Uh, who, knows, who knows? But 83% would agree with us on the house. All right. 17% said they'd rather have a car. Cars depreciate, man. What are you talking about? Yeah, they don't last so long. Mm-hmm. The la- houses can last forever. Not really. Not really, no. All right. Would you rather be a fast, <laughs> be a faster sprinter than Us- Usain Bolt in his prime oh. or be a faster swimmer than Michael Phelps in his prime? Runner. Yeah, me too. Dead. I'd rather be a faster runner than swimmer. 72% said runner. Really? 28% said swimmer. You know why? Because you can't be faster than Michael Phelps. That's just run, that's, Forrest, run. Oh, you want to know something crazy to think about? Like you and I, we watch those Olympic games, right? Yeah, that's history for like the younger generation. Yeah, you think right about now. it. There's, that's history. There's for people them. in in our uh, youth group that never knew about that. Like, well, they, they were, only they know about because of history, right? They were babies though. Like we experienced it, man. Like I remember watching all those. But anyways, so would you rather have a oh, large one. painting of yourself or a large sculpture of yourself? Like a David or like that's a Mona a, Lisa? That's, that's uh, about to say, I'm like a David. That's a little too personal. <laughs> David's a little too personal. We'll put the leaf in front of I was of thinking more like Newt Rockney in front of Notre Dame. That's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. You're over here thinking naked David. I, uh, I would say probably painting. I'd say painting. I'd say too. painting. I think painting would be cool. 38% said painting. What? 62% said sculpture. Wow, because y'all are vain. You're so... Y'all are vain. We're sitting here wanting a painting. <laughs> Bro, we want a painting to be like, hey, look how cool we be. And people are like, nah, I want a freaking statue. I want something I can touch. I mean, it is cool to go like the United Center. You see Jordan out front. I think that... Uh, I think they got a Kobe one now in front of the Staples I, Center now. Maybe they're not done know. with it. But, like, you know, we got Newt Rockney in Notre Dame. You got Vince Lombardi in Lambo. I think we got Lou Holtz in Notre Dame, too. Anybody that's won, um, anybody that's won a national do championship. Do we have Lou Holtz yet? I thought so. But anybody that's won a, a national championship at Notre Dame gets a uh, statue. Because that's what Kelly, uh, Brian Kelly said. He goes, because he's got the most wins. Got the most wins. Out of everybody. But he does not have but a he national goes, championship. I don't have a statue outside which you have to win a national championship. So he goes, my job's not finished. I don't have a statue. I'm like, well, he's I, going for the whole I shebang. actually was a little nervous they were going to can his butt just to make sure he did not get more wins. I was a little nervous, was, too. You know, I was, I was I'm nervous. Glad, I'm glad they didn't, though, because he's, he's a good coach. He's a great coach. Anyways. Anywho. Let's move on. Cool. So talk. here's the problem with this episode. There's no coffee. Um, because at this rate, we're going to get home at midnight. And it's, I want to sleep. It's currently 9.35 p.m. on a Friday night for us. But it's cool, though. But well, the cool thing was. We've had a good afternoon. Well, afternoon. We got, we've so, had a good break in between the episodes. So, yeah, we did an episode. Um, and then we actually, one of our listeners gave us a call and left a message yesterday. Mm-hmm. And so we decided. Yeah, and, and, and he said, call us back. Yeah, he said, call me back. We don't play games. He goes, or you don't. And so we're like, challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> so we gave him a call back, and uh, we had a great, great, I don't know. Half hour. Half hour, 45-minute conversation with him. It was it was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Got to hear his testimony. and it was Just someone who was at the lowest of lows, addicted to drugs yeah. in jail, and then found Jesus. Right. You know? Yeah, it was, it was so, so cool to be able to actually get to talk to somebody. And his name was uh, Dustin. Dustin Slade. You forgot already. I normally no, I knew, I knew, I knew oh, the first name. But like, so, Dustin, name. if you're listening, bro, driving your truck, we love you, homie. That was a cool conversation. You, buddy. I so, know you're like, wait, well, that was a long time ago. Well, so we did that. Fun. I complained about clients. <laughs> we want and did visual concept designing. I've got what I don't know, four or five. Yeah, designs I'm over struggling there. with with helping a client figure out what so, logo yeah, they actually want. We did want. that. And then we talked about some CRT. Talked and about then, some uh, Jesus. Talked about a lot of Jesus. And then we're like, hey, we probably we should probably do this. should record <laughs> now. Now I will say we're hyped up on. We had coffee. We had that that caffeinated Cliff Bar lap up last episode from Beth. Right. We this, did that. This is episode number two for the night. We did the Peruvian coffee from oh. Brew It Forward. Yeah. I saw coffee a little bit. Company. Dude, last episode the Thanksgiving one. I couldn't stop coughing. Okay. okay. Well, the Thanksgiving one was actually like several episodes ago. Cause oh no, it was last no, episode. No, that's me. I'm sorry. That I was. That's, you're thinking Halloween. I'm thinking Halloween because we we had to like Oops. go. We had to like sneak Halloween like four episodes early. <laughs> We're like, hey, we forgot to do a Halloween episode. Let's do it right, right now. We got to do it now. But but you know, I I couldn't stop coughing and I had a headache and I'm just like, I'm gonna die. So I actually got up and like walked around the camera and got my water because I'm like, I am. Not you're like, okay. Hey, keep going. I'm like. Uh, uh, okay, I'm nervous now. So, and, and yeah. now I have squirt. So, I'm drinking my squirt. Check what? out, uh, check out the Brew It Forward Coffee Company. Uh, remember, coupon code RTC will get you ten percent off. Not the subscription, just the normal just bag the of normal. coffee. But if you get a subscription, you get free shipping. What's free it? shipping and eighteen bucks for a pound of coffee that is uh, roasted, roasted, ready to go, fresh shipped, roasted. Gets to your house in like three to four days. Yeah, 
Like it is like after it's roast. Quick. It's like three to four days after roast. Yeah, Jared so. and Marianne, they do a good job. Phenomenal. With that. So I have a quick fun fact for you. So I'm fun drinking fact, squirt. squirt. I actually um, finished it because it was it was a baby can. Squirt. But all. did you know that if you drink too much squirt, you can get grapefruit poisoning? What? So my my old college roommate, Micah Bordez. I don't know if he's listening. If you're listening, what's up, Micah? He hit. Uh, so I got him. I got him hooked on this stuff, right? And so right. he went back after Christmas break, told his brother about it, and his brother like bought. And this is all he drank. He bought a ton. This is all he drank nonstop. And then all of a sudden he got so sick. He went to the doctor and the doctor was like, dude, what have you been like? What? Tell me about your diet. Cause this, this doesn't make sense. What's going on? And he's like, I don't know. And he goes, you've been drinking something weird. Just, I, I don't know. Kombucha. I don't know. And he goes, Oh, I've been drinking a lot of squirt. And he's like, you have grapefruit poisoning. So uh, how? Cause it's got less than 1% juice. Uh, on it. That, you have to drink that much squirt. Holy but if you holy. drink that much squirt, you can get grapefruit poisoning. Wow. Which I don't recommend. That's that's a serious problem. You know, okay. Would you rather? <laughs> <laughs> squirt or sun kissed? Oh, squ- uh, squirt all day long. Really? Mm-hmm. Sun kissed for me, man. That one. Like orange sun kissed? Oh, orange oh, sun yeah. kiss oh. hits the spot. Oh, on but a that, hot day, a nice ice cold but that sun squirt, kiss. That squirt, squirt just hits different. Squirt hits different. But I also never had squirt until I was in high school. Hmm. Whereas I grew up having I'm, orange pop, I'm, you know? I'm not a grapefruit fan, so I don't like squirt. I'm not the biggest, but Squirt just is different. Like it's, Squirt's different. Yeah. But anyways, let's jump on to our review. Ooh, we talked about coffee. You we've know what, dude? Squirt. We've had, it seems like every week we have a new review. Thank you all that listen in Which and contribute and get a hold of awesome. us. awesome. Now this one, I don't know how this dude listens to us so much. I really don't. I don't know how he does it, but. It's our soothing personalities. Yeah. <laughs> your, your, your soothing personality. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, this is from Trenton B. He actually left his name. B. Trenton B. He says, just recently found this podcast. However, I've been listening to one to three episodes per day while I'm at work. Dang. One to three. Mark and Chris wow. are two really cool guys. You get to know them from the different fun questions, like question in a box, which means he's a rewinder. Yes, he is. Thank and you. And I connected, which is awesome. I'm studying to be a pastor, and each episode I have listened to um, has taught or reminded me of really good material, and I think they have important discussions that more believers need to hear so that they can grow in their faith. Final thought. I like it. Final thought. At the end of the day, that's what you should have said. You should have At, said. The, At end the end of the, the day, day, I appreciate that they remind us listeners that they are not here to replace the church, but to be our supplement gummies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for the podcast, guys. You inspired me to start up a podcast with my close friend, too. Yo, let us know what the name of your podcast is, Trenton. We, we, I want to know. Yeah, me too. But we're the Flintstones of his day. <laughs> the supplement. <laughs> I, I was thinking vitamin C, but we the Flintstone the gummies. Fl- the fl- dude, were you Flintstone gummies or were you a chewable. tablet? Oh, I'm no, chewable, dude. I, those are gross. Oh, they're gummies. delicious. I can't. You, okay. Oh, they were, I used to like want to eat them like candy all the time. So I, the only, only vitamins I will take, like I've even tried taking like, like the vitamin pills because it's easier. No, I will only do gummies. Because I'm a kid. Because I'm a child. I'm a grown child. Because I want fruit snacks. So I don't think anybody will disagree with you. No, nope, no one, <laughs> no one will disagree with me. I, I, I don't eat fruit snacks as much as I used to because they're in the basement. And I don't see them as much. Like, Dang it! I have to walk all the way to the basement. Well, because <laughs> at the old house, anytime I went to grab coffee, the fruit snacks were right next yeah. to it. So your boy would have fruit snacks and coffee in the morning because and at night. That's right. I still, I still enjoy a nice good old bowl of fruity pebbles. So. See, I've never been a big Fruity Pebble guy. No, I want Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Fruit Loops, <laughs> Apple Jacks, those are good. Reese Puffs. Reese mm. Puffs, Reese Puffs. Cookie Crisps. Oh, we recently introduced the kids to Cookie oh. Crisps, and they cookie crisps. freaked out whenever we buy them. They're like, cookies! Cookies for breakfast. And exactly, we're like, here's all the fake vitamins that so came with it. I just want to know, where was the Lucky Charms marshmallows only when we were kids? At the Amish store, bro. Really? Go to the Amish I stores. Couldn't, I couldn't find them when I was a kid. So I would always like I'd pick out the marshmallows because I had to eat the whole thing. Right, so, right. So then I'd eat the regular cereal. And I'm like, uh, and I'd usually throw, I'm a fat kid, so I'd throw some sugar on top of it. And <laughs> Frosted then, Flakes with extra sugar on top? And then, oh. I, and then I would throw the marshmallows back in and start eating the mar- like marshmallow cereal. Like that's how OG I was. But so. I feel that. I relate to that. Yeah. But if you go to the Amish stores like Grandma's Pantry in Wakarusa or down to Shipshawana or Napanee, you can get a freaking huge container of just the marshmallows. So I want to know who, like, they get a sorting house and they're like, all right, <laughs> I'm going to pick out all the marshmallows out of the Lucky Charms. I mean, if you can't watch TV, you got to do something, I guess. That's true. That's true. Oh, goodness. But either way, you are all about them Fruity Pebbles. 
I do like Fruity Pebbles. And uh, you're Fruit Loop. Trenton B, thanks for reaching out to us. And uh, any of our other listeners that have left us a review or reached out, hey, listen, we still we haven't talked about it much, but we still we haven't. We still do the, the, the little mini swag bags. And Janelle's apparently in charge of it now. Yeah, so if you reach happen. out to us, uh, either through email, DM, PM, text, Gmail, whatever else. Carrier pigeon. Yeah. Whatever smoke you decide signals. to do. Smoke signals. Uh, That's let cool. us know your address, and uh, we'll get you a little mini swag bag, which is our... Our bumper sticker or our regular sticker. It's this. If you're watching YouTube, it's that little sticker oh, right there. It's our logo with the sticker. And then we got a nice little pin that you could put on your belt or backpack or whatever else. Or if you're not into pins, you can give it to your kids. So there you um, go. Yeah, and we do that, and and that's our little mini swag bag as a thank you to you for for listening and being part of our RTC family. And just saying thank you, just a thank you. I love it. You know, we should. Talk about eventually another giveaway, but not right now. But eventually we should do another giveaway. That thought crossed my mind today. We're coming up on Christmas. Mm -hmm. We might need another giveaway. Mm -hmm. So I'm feeling it. Maybe. 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 We'll Maybe see. we'll do a New Year giveaway. Oh, okay. Like do it in the New Year. New Year, New You. Ooh. New Year, New You, New New Do. I don't know. RTC hair Maybe cream. we'll do like a couple new like RTC thingamajigs. Designs. Thingamajig. There, I'm like thingamajigs. Thingamabobs. You know the 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 the, the, the doohickey. The doohickey that goes on the thingamabob and the, does the does the wing dingy thing. As Scuttle would say from Little Mermaid, <laughs> the dingle hop. But either way, <laughs> reach out to us because we want to get that to you. It definitely, might be a little definitely. slow, or if I forgot Actually, to send it, you, you, it won't you know. be slow anymore. If you get to us, Janine will probably have it out within the week. Which is dope. Because Which is amazing. really quick because Mark and I were like two, three weeks. We just couldn't even get... Well, but uh, yeah, life was But nuts. we're not... Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry, but we work. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, but sorry. Sorry, but sorry. But so, sorry, but sorry. Either way, dude. So let's jump into the conversation let's for dive into it. It's the only day. been 17 minutes. There so. you go. All right, let's dive I into it. I love how we always say the timestamp when we do that, too. And people probably go, oh, it's only felt like two, but probably Or not. people are like, yeah, goodness, it's about time. So We get both sides of it. We so. do. We really do. And that's, people, we do us, people, baby. We do us. Some people are like, go more. And some people are like, hey, can you cut it down to like a minute? Like Janiel. <laughs> Well, yeah, and some other listeners. That that's true. Had. That's true. But that's fine. That, you know, we that's do right. what we do. You know what? We are sorry to those who don't like it, and you're welcome to those who do. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. So this actually was texted to me. Uh, not texted. I'm sorry. Uh, direct message to it was us. I thought it was Instagram. Instagram. Well, well yeah, yes, direct right. message. So yeah, yeah. So it was in Instagram, and they were like, "Hey, what about guns?" And I'm like, "You know what? Let's talk about it Dude, now." That's a that's a yeah that's a good one. So he he uh this this one guy you know he reached out to us uh, we were messaging back and forth a little bit and, and we were just like hey let's have a conversation he goes cool out of the blue he goes how about guns and I'm like we're gonna do that this week yeah. so I mean it's gonna, obviously it took a little bit to come out but right. I was like we're gonna do it this week and I think that's a, a fair conversation especially with all what's happening in America right now where sure. there's potentially going to be more gun restrictions there are people some places are trying to have like completely outlawed mm. guns some people are trying to fight for more gun rights and so how should christians think about guns and firearms and even though we have to talk about the second amendment because that's a big part of well, this because we live in the states we live in the states so if you live outside of the states i mean write, write us and tell you tell us what your opinion on right. guns and stuff. Yeah, it's true because I know different countries think about different things. Like sure. British people look at us and go, why are you guys so obsessed about guns? Right. Like, we want them outlawed over here. Why are you so obsessed with it? And so I think part of that goes back to how America was born and how we were raised and all these different things. Some of it sure. depends upon where you live because right. if you live in Montana, very different than living in New York City. And yeah. that's the interesting about America is we have such different cultures. Cultures. Yeah. Founded even in the, even in the state. Sure, we look at Indiana. Yeah, depending on where you're at in India. If you're in Indiana, depending where you live in South Bend. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you live on the west side, you're a gun toter. <laughs> well, sure. And then you got you know if you live more on the southern part or outside state limits, you might be a farmer or yeah, you might right. be inner city. Like I mean, right. it's just it's a very unique culture with sure. not just culture of South Bend, but America in general. And but part of this conversation also comes up because lately. And, you know, specifically with the one shooting in the church where the guy walked in kind of sketch with the, like the weird, I think he had Did a wig. Did you just and say kind of, kind of sketch? Kind of sketch. He came in, he was kind of sketch. Like he, he wasn't so much where like, but, but basically he walked in and then sure. during communion gunned down two people. There was sure. hesitation. And then finally someone, you know, popped him, popped him to, to save the rest of the church. And there's been, you know, the shootings down at the, um, at the church in, uh, 
Oh, there's been all sorts of shootings uh, all over. You know, the Baltimore. States. I think there was one. There was uh, the, the recent Alabama, one. There was the mosque. The recent shooting, though, was Alec Baldwin on the set of his new movie Rust with the prop gun and killed somebody. And that's asking even more questions about right. about how we should handle firearms in right. general. And you know, there's Christians on both sides of the bay. I was talking with a friend of mine, and he's very much with the fact of if the government says give up your guns, give them up. And then there's other people where it's like, you, you know, can, over my dead body. You can pry it from my cold, dead fingers. But, but seriously, though, and so, and, and both sides are the ones where it's like, okay, stop being John Wayne Christians. Well, okay, well, stop being wusses. And so it's like, you know, even though if, if whatever place you find yourself in, you generally have a strong opinion. But then once you go outside of your general circles, you're like, oh, there's other opinions on this matter. Sure. I did not know that. Yeah, sure. But, you know, with, with shootings like the Columbine incident when uh, the gunman went in and killed all the Amish when you know there's gunmen's taking out people in mosques now and churches and you know there's the like, gun violence it's gun violence sees no gender race religion it doesn't matter there's just gun violence and a lot of people say okay so since there's gun violence violence breeds more violence we need to take away the thing that's causing the violence and then there's the other side of the equation where it's like <laughs> this is what preserves the peace yo like well, my argument to it, and it's been my argument forever, is, well, we see in Genesis a stone was used as a weapon. So really, is it the the tool or is it the person? And we'll talk about it. And we'll talk about <laughs> it. So obviously, we have to talk about the Second Amendment because that's where a lot of Christians talk about the fact yeah. of, these are my Second Amendment rights. In America. And I'm going to say, we're going to come back to the fact of, should you even be fighting for that right as a Christian? Because that's that's a question that some people have. Sure. Um, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, just this is for reference, just so we all know what we're talking about. The Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States, when this was founded, this was not a... Uh, you know, um, like, like this is an amendment to the original constitution, but this is a amendment since the beginning of our country. Like it's right. been here since, since the beginning. It's an OG law. How about that? Right. Um, it gives the rights to keep and bear arms and that the government cannot infringe on that right. And they say it's not a privilege. It's a right. As an American, you have the right. Sure. No one can tell you otherwise. Sure. Um, now, obviously if you're a murderer, we're not going to give you one of those. Right. Like, that well, background we, checks we've got and all the different things. Yeah, of now. course. And so, but then moving forward, one of the most, uh, it, it, you know, there was pretty much no question on that for years. And then in 2008, there was, you know, District of Columbia, D.C. versus Heller. On June 26, 2008, the Supreme Court affirmed the Second Amendment guarantees the individual right to keep and bear arms for lawful uses. The ruling read in part that the Second Amendment protects individual rights, again, the rights, to possess a firearm unconnected with service in a militia and to use that arm for traditionally lawful purposes such as self-defense within a home. And then there was another court case in Chicago, and I don't I don't have the year written down, I just know it's off the top of my head, where they were still trying to fight where it's like, okay, that's fine, but we still need to ban it because of all the gun violence that we have here. So even though it's a right, and yet, does it need to actually be a right? And yet in Chicago, it's one of the most murderous cities in America, and they've banned guns. Uh, no, they didn't. They, they, they have banned uh, guns. Have they banned guns? You're not allowed to carry a gun. That's why you can't. Okay. And that was part of... I remember so, on mission trips. So really, what did it do uh, for him? Big goose egg. Right. And but now there are arguments, and it's true there's other countries over in England where sure. they, you know, they have banned guns. Sure. Australia. And there is no gun. Australia. Violence, they had a get gun buyout over in Australia years ago to where they bought all the guns. The government did. Hey, bring us your gun, we're gonna give you so much money. And they destroyed the guns. Hmm. And, and now th and there are some successes in that, but the question, though, is isn't so much on the political side of what should we do, but the fact of as Christians, how should we think about it? Because there's generally two sure. schools of thought. There's the pacifist side, and then there's the um, pro-liberty side, I think is the best way to describe that. How would you describe it? Not pro-liberty, but pretty much the fact of this is an American right. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. You have the right to defend yourself and defend your home. Sure, and, sure. And be prepared. We're, you know, we're, we're, we're saying guns, but... Um, this is something that has been done throughout history, thousands of years of, Hey, I mean, we look at the story of Abraham and when lot was carried off, what did Abraham do? He gathered up his men and his, and his servants and he went and took back lot right with swords. So, it, I, you know, we we're saying guns, we're kind of picking on guns, but I would say weaponry, mm -hmm. <laughs> self-defense weaponry. I don't, I don't know what you would call it, but yeah. So anyways, 
And, and you have to, and this is what a lot of people talk about, especially in the church world. Like I'm pulling up a website that I actually built for a local guy. He's our church security team, I would say is top notch, absolutely top notch. And part of that is because the guy who runs it, I mean, he's a state trooper who also has a separate business, not, not connected to the state at all, where he literally travels around the country to actually train churches on how to prepare for situational actual performance-based situational training. Right. And he even talks about there's four levels of competency, unconscious incompetence. You don't know what you don't know. Conscious incompetence. You know you how much you don't know. Conscious competence and then unco- like, like all these different things. And basically the fact of if you are not trained for a given situation, you will respond poorly, which will cause more damage than good. So the answer is not nothing. The answer is trained for the situation in the right way with the right methods, with the right mindset. Sure. So if something happens, it actually does more good than bad because he was talking about if you are if you are incompetent and you're unknowing about it and you try to do something to resolve a situation the chances of you making it worse just well, grow and i think part of it goes back to the whole fight or flight fight flight or freeze it's a mm. natural human response and, and every human's going to do one of the three they're either going to freeze in a situation they're going to try to fight even whether they know how to do it or not or they're going to flee Mm-hmm. which is the flight method. So. Right. So before we even get to the Bible says, I want to just read some of the questions that I think would be fun for us to talk about. Tonight. Sure. We're sure. not going to answer them yet. Sure. Just, just questions. All right. I'll be quiet. All right. So some of the questions that I was even thinking about is, is, you know, how should a Christian think about guns in light of just the world, not the second amendment, just in general, but at the same token, the fact of, okay, so we have the right to bear arms as Americans, but should Christians fight to keep that right? Or is that the wrong thing to be fighting for? Should Christians be okay with using and owning guns? Should Christians fight for more strict gun laws to protect people? Or should we fight for more pro-gun so that people can protect themselves? Um, Should Christians arm themselves and then train to defend themselves and then train their church members to defend other people as well? If the government told us to turn in their guns, what should we do as Christians? If Christians serve in the military police force, should they be allowed to be elders and leaders in the church? If a government becomes so tyrannical, should Christians rise up and fight the government just like our Constitution gives us the right to? And is the Second Amendment even biblical? Because if you're a Christian and the answer is no, it's not biblical, then why the heck are we fighting for it? But if the answer is yes, then let's go get it. So the question is, is how should we think about it in general? And it's it's a big, large question. <clears throat> and normally when people talk about, okay, well, so let's go to the Bible talk about it. So the Bible says, love your enemies, turn the other cheek. God is omnipotent and sovereign. So why are you putting your trust and faith more in a weapon than you are in God himself? And aren't you aren't you bulletproof until God tells you so anyways? And if and for us being Calvinistic, we see these shooting in churches. Isn't that just part of God's will? It's an appointed time. Right. So the fact of if that's the way it's supposed to be and God's all sovereign and knows what's going on, then why are we wasting our time doing all these things? Shouldn't we just trust God? Sure. And um, I'll jump forward to even this quote um, where an argument against guns, uh, Miles Wernz, he's a Mennonite professor. Okay. And, you know, this is even after the shooting of all the Amish people who are the, I mean, the, the Anabaptist movement in general, they are, um, oh, what's, the, I'm, they're pacifists right. and they're not weak sauce. This is the fact of we don't fight and we don't have weapons that can hurt other people. Like we have tools where we can like, obviously we own knives so we can like cut our food, but you know, we don't have weapons for the sake of just hurting people type Mm -hmm. thing. And so they are very pacifistic. So when, when the, when the guy went in and shot up in this, this Amish group, there was, I mean, how were they supposed to defend themselves? He killed himself after he shot and killed and hurt a bunch of Amish girls. Right. Um, And even after that, he was in a, so this guy, miles weren't, um, I'll put the the link in the show notes. Um, he, uh, he's opposed to arming church members. He said, worship and a show of force, even in defense of our lives, are incompatible by the light of the New Testament. To combine them, the use of force and worshiping God, is to try to run behind Jesus in our reading of Scripture. So in other words, the fact of we're trying to run behind him, like we're trying to sneak past this, mm-hmm. where the fact of, no, Jesus says, love your enemy, turn the other cheek. Um, the Bible verse of... Uh, I had it written out. Oh, Matthew 26, 52, where Jesus told Peter, those who live by the sword die by the sword. Die by the sword. Right. So why the heck are we training our people to use a modern day sword? Sure. Because if we live by it, aren't we going to die by it? Mm-hmm. And most, I would say most Americans, especially in the South, out West, um, Second Amendment, right, gun breathing, like, you know, 
instead of God Country Notre Dame, it's God Country Guns. Like you see bumper stickers like that around here all the time. Right. The Punisher, the Punisher symbol all over the place. Right. The military. So it's like, okay, so if Jesus tells us to do these, then why are we going the opposite direction? And mm. that's the argument that a lot of people use against guns. I mean, have you heard any of these before? Oh yeah. I mean, I have a buddy who, t- who talks about it all the time. But the question is, is what does the Bible say? And does it actually say anything about it being okay to use guns? Um, before I get into probably the most popular one with Nehemiah, um, let's first talk about what the role of the government even is. Sure. Because, you know, the government's job, we're talking about the military, we're talking about protecting and, and all these different things. That's, that's what the government does. You know, we have law enforcement, we have military Punish, punish the evil, take care of people. And, you know, in right. Romans 13, 1 through 6, um, it says, let everyone submit to governing authority since there's no authority except from God and the authorities that exist are instituted by God, which is another one that people say, hey, if they say take away your guns, obey. Um, so then the one who resists the authority is opposing God's command and those who oppose it will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. But you want to be unafraid of the one in authority do what is good, and you will have its approval. For God is a servant for your good, and if you do wrong, be afraid, because um, because it does not carry the sword for no reason. So right there, it actually says that the government carries the sword. Right. In other words, the Bible even says that the God put in government to rule and to protect. You know, make sure those who do good are okay, they're taken care of, and sure. those who actually do evil are punished. And so God even says, or the Bible says, God gave them the right to do this. Right. And he gave them the sword for it is God's servant and an avenger that brings wrath for the one who does wrong. Therefore you must submit not only because of wrath, but also because of your conscience and for by this reason you pay taxes since the authorities are God's servants continually tending to these tasks. Mm. So we pay taxes. So the way the government can use force and the sword to punish what's evil. Right. So right there, the Bible says, you know, firearms potentially and other weapons given to the government to t- protect its own and also to, you know, make sure the bad people, like, you know, are, are punished. Sure. That's the way God designed it. So right there, we can say, okay, well, firearms themselves are not bad because God instituted it towards, you know, right. the, the government itself. Um, but so if we go to Nehemiah 4 real quick, I'm going to open up my Bible because I'm just going to read the passage. The, the headline, actually, when you open your Bible, if you have, like, like, you know, some Bibles just have, like, the text there, but if you have, like, the little, like, pericope section of, like, hey, this right. is what this area is all about, it actually is called the sword and the trowel of of Nehemiah. Um, and, of course, there, there we go. I'm like, it's it's not working. Okay, so this is a long passage, but we're going to read it, and it's going to be good. Let's hear it. You're, here we go. So, again, read on the CSB because that's what we do. So, Nehemiah, Old Testament, Chapter 4. Context, he is rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem to protect Israel from invaders. Um, And so he was sent back to do it. So when Sambalot heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became furious. He mocked the Jews before his colleagues and the powerful men of Samaria and said, what are these pathetic Jews doing? Can they really restore it by themselves? Will they offer sacrifices? (laughs) Will they even ever finish it? Can they bring these burnt stones back to life from the mounds of rubble? Then Tobiah, the Ammonite, who was beside him, says, Indeed, even if a fox climbed up what they were building, (laughs) he'd break their stone wall. So they're mocking the snot. Listen, our God, for we are, and this is back to Nehemiah talking. He says, Listen, our God, for we are despised. Make their insults return on their own heads and let them take as plunder to the land of captivity. Do not cover their guilt or let their sin be erased from your sight because they have angered the builders. In other words, they ticked off the builders because they're making fun of us, what you told us to do. So uh, you can just give them what's coming. Right. Um, So Nehemiah continues. So we rebuilt the wall until the entire wall was joined together up to half its height for the people had the will to keep working. When Sambalot, Tobiah, and the Arabs, and the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites heard that their repair of the wall of Jerusalem was progressing and that the gaps were actually being closed, they became more furious. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw it into confusion. So we prayed to our God and stationed guards because of them day and night. So right there, Nehemiah says, we prayed, but we prepared. Right. Like, because we prayed that God would protect us, but, you know, we still were actually active in doing that. In Judah, it was said, the strength of the laborer fails since there is so much rubble, we will never be able to rebuild the wall. And our enemy says they won't realize it until we're among them. It can kill them and stop their work. When the Jews who lived nearby arrived, they said to us time and time again, 
Everywhere you turn, they attack us. So I stationed people behind the lowest sections of the wall, at the vulnerable areas. I stationed them by families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. After I made an inspection, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people, don't be afraid of them. Remember the great and awe-inspiring Lord and fight for your countrymen, you sons and daughters, your wives and your home. So he just said, remember how great God is. Oh, and shoot the living daylights out of them. Like, that's really what he said. Right. Um, and then this is this is the sword and the trial. I love this part. When our enemies heard that we knew their scheme and that God frustrated it, or God had frustrated it, every one of us returned to his work on the wall. From that day on, half of my men did the work while the other half held spears, shield, bows, and armors. The officers supported all the people of Judah who were rebuilding the wall. The laborers who carried the loads worked with one hand and held their weapons in the other. I'm like, dang, that's, that's pretty Ready fire, to go. man. So they held their weapons and they kept on working with the other. Uh, each of the builders had swords strapped around his weight while he was building. And the one who sounded the ram's horn was besides me. Um, in case there was an actual, like, uh, a threat coming up. Right. Then I said to the nobles and the officials and the rest of the people, the work is enormous and spread out, for we are separated far from one another along the wall. Whenever you hear the sound of the ram's horn, rally to us there, and our God will fight for us. Hold, hold up. So our God will fight for us, but we got the swords. Okay. They got to so, rally there. God's going to fight for them, but use them to do the fighting. Mm-hmm. So we continued the work while half of the men were holding spears from daybreak until the stars came out. At that time, I also said to the people that everyone and his servants spend the night inside Jerusalem so that they can stand guard by night and work by day. And I, my brothers, my servants, and the men of the guards with me never took off our clothes. In other words, they went... They were oh, ready to go at what, all what, times. What, what, what movie was that where they... Saw, oh, um... Uh, the Eagle, I think, is what it was with uh old like Channing Tatum, like when he was younger. They they did that where he trained his men and like they they were ready to go at night, and then when the the Anglo Saxon attacked, they were ready to go because they slept in their arm and they were ready to fight. Right. Um. And I, my brother and servant Martin, never we never took off our clothes. Each carried his weapon, even when bathing. Yeah. There you go. Prepared at all times. And that also meant they took their weapon. They they didn't take their phones with Instagram while they were pooping. They took their swords with them while they were doing their thing. <laughs> but at the end, of the, <laughs> people are like, I was not ready for that comment. I wasn't ready for that comment. Got, but, but when you read this passage, it's the fact of Nehemiah trusted God more than any one of us probably listening to this podcast combined. But what did he do? Every single person had a weapon in one hand and a trowel in the other. Or if they were working, they had one on their hip. When the ram's sword was blown, they came, they fought like crazy, but they said, our God is awesome and we'll do this. So it's like, okay, so how do we balance knowing that God is sovereign, fights on our behalf, or his children, and guns? Mm-hmm. Like, can we? is it fair to say, if someone says, oh, well, if you really trust God, you want to need the guns. Like, is it fair for us to say you know what? No, God can use us with these things for his own glory, and he's the one who actually did it. Right. You know, so I think the the going back to the one of the questions of, is it fair to say that we believe in an all-sovereign, all-powerful God who knows what's going on, and we can still have weapons to defend ourselves, and that does not go against our belief that God is all-powerful? Like, can we say that? And I think the answer is, well, from Nehemiah, it seems like it. Now, we obviously don't want to build our theology just on what one person did because is this just what he did or is this what we should do? Mm. And I think that's a fair question. Mm. And some people talk about, oh, the New Testament, we're all about love and forgiveness and grace and and acceptance and turn the other cheek. In the Old Testament, man, they slaughter the crap out of everybody. Well, yeah. And it's a whole different And How do we handle that when God told them, no, go use your weapons and go holy war them? Well, there was a difference in how God was dealing between Israel and and how he's dealing with us now. There's a huge difference. Then it was a land given to them, and, and they were told to defend it, right? Mm-hmm. He gave a certain land, and any time they tried to go outside of that land, they usually lost. But if they were within that land that God had given them, unless they were being punished and taken to captivity mm-hmm. for disobedience, God was there to protect them and help them and set angels to slaughter armies in, you know, on behalf of them. In hit in God's name, but He also sent them to take the land. I mean, we look at Jericho, and and they were commanded to kill every man, woman, child, beast, livestock, everything. Thing, everything. Yeah. Saul, we see 
constantly when Saul was taking the land. Saul was constantly commanded to do the same thing all the time. And he didn't always listen either. It caused mm-hmm, a lot right. of problems. But so it, and and then now it's you get Jesus saying, Hey, if you live by the sword, you're gonna die by the sword. If my kingdom was of this earth, my disciples would fight, but it is not of this earth. And, and, so, and I think it's fair to ask the question of okay, is what Nehemiah is doing, is he living by the sword? I or is he using the sword as a mean of self defense? He's not going out there and that's right. like his mantra. It, well, it was a it was a defense, right? It was right. defending God's God's land that God gave to the Israelites. So mm-hmm. and that I guess that was my point. It was that they it was a different calling. I don't know. I'm very torn on this matter. I, I, I am too. I'm very mm-hmm. torn. I'm, I'm going to be honest about that. That I can see both sides. I can see those who say, "No, we shouldn't fight. No, we shouldn't defend." And then I see those that, "Oh, no, we should defend the the weak, the helpless, the needy. Those are the people we should defend in any which way we can." Mm-hmm. Now, uh, let's just go through, through your questions. Let's again. go through. Let's, let's go, go through, through one by one because it's going to be too hard to try to formulate. Okay, so here's the first one: Is should Christians be okay with using? And owning guns. So, in my opinion, I think that using and owning guns, yes, for for you know sport, hunting, self defense. I'm. This is where I start to get on that fence of I am not sure. Mm-hmm. I see it both ways. I see how we're supposed to trust in God. Um, how you know when when Peter was trying to defend Christ, Christ is like, put your sword away, Peter. I mean, that was a different circumstance because well, Jesus because his had time to, had come. Yeah, he had to go to the cross. Right. But then again, we see Paul. We didn't see Paul trying to defend or take up arms against Rome. or. But against, we also see Paul using but, his Roman citizenship exactly, to shut people down. Exactly. He Well, he used, right, to gain access to going to Rome, which mm-hmm. was his ultimate goal, which he wanted to do. And, he and he's like, hey, y'all, I'm a so, Roman. Y'all didn't treat he, me like Right, going. so he used his... Roman citizen rights. And right. so it's like, but I, uh, there's rights and then there's God's law. Well, is it as also well. different of using using what's there versus fighting to well, make what's there and stay See, there? this is where I'm I'm torn. Right. So um I think that God's laws always trump and not Donald Trump, but trump the <laughs> laws of the land. We're talking like so Rook here. Your rights. I, if if America said, well, it's your within your right to murder or rape or pillage or whatever, right? If I was a Viking back in the day, that would have been my right as a Viking is to go rape, murder, pillage, and plunder. That doesn't make it right. It does not make it right in the sight of God. Mm-hmm. And so I always have to obey that higher authority. And so do my rights trump God? No. No. I don't know where the line is at as far as self-defense. Mm, okay. Because I see, I see scripturally how we should defend the innocence. We should, I mean, just like why, why that's the whole reason why we protest abortions. We're defending the innocence, you know? Uh, so I could see that aspect, but then I see like, we're supposed to be peacemakers, peacekeepers. And some people go, yeah, I'm a peacemaker. Yeah, my gun is I take them the out. <laughs> like, and it's like, uh, well, and, and there is some truth to that. Like if someone sure. came in to try and do something to sure. our church or someone's trying to, like, like you hear of all the time of like people who specifically well, in preschools where right. it's like at a strange father tries to come get the kid. Yo, you show that gun, they backing down. Well, and you I, kept the peace. I think of uh, of our police officers, our mm-hmm. brothers that are in arms, you know, in the military, and so and they're out there trying to keep peace. They're trying to help with the peace. And their gun is usually a last last resort. Sure, sure. But so I mean, first question: should should Christians be okay with using and owning guns? Yes, I think we should be okay with using and owning guns. If you're asking my opinion of for self defense. I am unsure. I see it both ways. I have not been convicted one way or the other. I know for me, it would be a very last resort. Very last resort if I felt I had to do it. But and I, I, think I, the way, I think that's even the way most gun people feel. Like I have sure. people in our church who are very big gun owners, and they sure. say to my face, I pray I never have to fire this right. at somebody. And I'm torn about it because mm-hmm. I don't know if it's biblically right to use it to take somebody's life because knowing how God feels about every life. Mm-hmm. And so uh, right now I would say I probably would only use it if it was like, like first I would try to assess the situation and say, Hey, can I physically manhandle this person out of whatever they're doing mm-hmm. and, and restrain them? Cause that's what I, I want to preserve life. Even that type of life that would come into a church and shoot, even if it's sacrificing myself to try to prevent it. But if it comes to I can't and my only option is a gun, 
my first inclination right now is okay. I would use it. Mm-hmm. I don't. If, I'm it, not if it's you it's, or my wife, I'm not saying it's biblical. I'm just giving you my raw emotions right. with it right now. Now, can I ask? Do you own a gun? I do. I own several. Yep. And see, and for me, I actually I don't own one, and I'm never. I'm, I'm not going to say I never will. Sure. But as of where I'm right now, I will never own sure. one. Sure. And that's not because I think they're wrong, and I don't sure. think I think it's a right as an American to own one. Sure. But I don't because nope. of. I hear too many horror stories of kids, and I have curious kids. Yeah, see, I keep my weapons locked up and in safe. And like you hear of all these, you know, teenagers, and because even uh, they're like, oh, I was going to see my dad's gun. And, which again, people would argue, well, that's good. You need to train your kids. Well, sorry, I no. Um, but for me, it's the fact of I I struggle with depression, anxiety, yeah, and, and being openly candid. This week, I had two breakdowns. Yeah. This week, right. And it was not okay. And I, I mean, I didn't hurt anybody and I did, but I, I, I emotionally felt so low. Right. Why would I even want that? In front yeah. Of me? You, and, you know? and at that point you have to decide that. And I think you're making the right decision. And for hey, me, I'm like, what's no. the purpose? Like what's and I, I, the people say, Oh, if someone breaks in, call the cops. Well, first of all, I mean, Hey, no cop won't get there fast enough. Like right. that's just I'm, a, a bullet is faster than a phone call. I right. get that. And I understand right. it. Sure. And I'm not trying to be like, Oh, I trust in God's sovereignty. So if someone comes in, breaks and try to take my kids and my wife, I was going to be like, Bye, guys. No, this I, is mean, God's, I mean, you know. You know, look, thinking about where my weapons are at. I know. I don't walk around my house with my, with my gun on me. Right, I don't. No. And so if they broke into my house, uh, I'm going to throw myself in harm's way to protect my family. Mm-hmm. Um, I probably won't be able to get to my gun in time. So it's going to be a physical manhandling. And luckily, I'm a big dude. So I might, I might come out okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I mean, I, I mean, I've walked around my house with my baseball bat. Like, <laughs> yeah, but typically, like if somebody's breaking into your house... I mean, you're in bed, and so it depends on what you have. So, I mean, yeah, I would recommend if you feel that way, then, then hey, the best thing to do is baseball bat by your bed. That way you've got something, you right. know. Um, so I, I, But I, I see a lot of good uses with guns, right? You could do a sporting with the guns and hunting. I see many stories of, of the Old Testament, New Testament, that they were hunters and um, just that's how they provided. And so, And I know I have a lot of personal friends that like to hunt, and and so they own guns because and they enjoy the, it. Yeah, they don't plan on ever shooting. And I mean, anybody. and I've gone to ranges and I right, shot, sure. and I, I sure. actually have a good shot. But I just choose personally. Sure. that's that's for me. Sure, I don't want them in my house. Sure. So let's move on to the next question: Should Christians fight for strict gun laws? Or I'll say for more, even even more strict. So right now. I would say that um, I don't think Christians should personally. Um. I think this is one of those aspects that it was a right of the founding fathers. Now, um, I think we have, you got to do a background check, especially if you're going to conceal care. It's a pretty rigorous process to conceal carry um, in most states. But Indiana, it's really easy. Indiana, it's, it's a little bit easier, but I know in Michigan, it's like you got to go before a gun board, and it's like if you lie on any application, they're going to dig around. If you lie, you ain't getting a permit. And I like that, actually. I'm not going to lie. And I so, like that. <laughs> You know, to me, the background check is sufficient, to me, my opinion. Um, if if it's done properly and the way it should be done, you should be able to see with the background check if there's, because they'll have to put down mental condition, you know, and stuff like that, mental evaluations, criminal history. And I do not believe that a gun should be in the hands of a criminal because that's one of those rights that when you do certain things, you lose rights. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the, the basis of our country. And so just like they lose vote, if you're a criminal, you lose voting rights. You don't get to vote no more in the elections. And so that's the consequence of doing wrong in this country, and that's a law that's established. Mm. You do this, you lose your right. All right, I can, I can, I can go with that. And so, to me, no, I think that the gun laws are strict enough. In some states, like Michigan, I think they're a little too strict. Um, I think it, if we're going by personally an American standard, um, I think it's infringing upon American rights. Oh, if I'm, right, if, but then the question go, and we're going to get to that, is is the American right, should that even be the case for Americans? Because at the end of the day, I don't. It doesn't sound really bad if we hand her to a higher calling, like sure. what you said. Sure. Even though this is an American right, sure, cool. Is sure. that still right for Christians though? And I'd like, uh, if we're going to talk about it later, I'm going to save my answer. We'll save that. it. <laughs> we're going to save that one. That's, that's the final one. That's the All final right. one. So let's. Uh, so you, so should I fight for? Uh, do, do I think Christians should fight for more strict gun laws? Yeah. If they are in the political realm, I would actually say yeah. Yeah. So it, I, 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 I mean, want to say fair. 
fair like fair I don't strength. think either like, one of us are on a hill that we're gonna like no. we're gonna die on this hill and this is this is my opinion and this is where I'm staying like to me I, I'm this is where I'm at right now mm. and, and so then the next one at. and this is a big one again with sure. the uh, the Anabaptist so like you know Mennonite sure um, Anabaptist is a huge movement over in in Europe still um, and there's even a lot of other Christian movements here in the the United States. Uh, but should Christians arm themselves? Like this one quote, this guy is like, you can't have worship and self-defense. Like, should Christians arm and then train themselves to defend themselves and their people around them? Like, should Christians arm themselves? Uh, this is one of those hairy moments for me. So I, I'm a kind of divided. In, um, I've done some training. I've done quite a bit of training, and I've armed, obviously. Um, I don't think it's a bad thing to have training um and i think if it's especially if it's would be used in a circumstance where you're defending the innocent with the training along with the being armed you know that that gun or that weapon is a last defense Mm -hmm. and you're going to do everything you can with your training to not have to use your weapon and so i think it's uh i think christians if they feel like they should have a weapon for possible self-defense? Yes, I, I 100% think that they should be trained because it, you don't want to own a weapon and not be trained because mm-hmm. that's how people and get not hurt. go to the range and shoot, but actually actually be trained. trained. Actually, uh, yeah, make it muscle memory. Be trained and know what you're doing before you hurt somebody else that you don't intend to hurt. Um, I would vow, not vow. I I would say that uh, for me if you can i mean they teach center mass right when you're in training they teach when you shoot you shoot center mass because that's what's going to stop them and it's the biggest target and it's the biggest e- easiest target to if you're if you practice and to me it's like i personally would struggle shooting center mass knowing i'm taking somebody's life <laughs> but if i had to do it again i would i would at this point do it um but i think training is very important and i think if, if you, as a Christian, you're deciding that, hey, I want to have a weapon in my house for self-defense and only use it in, in a certain self-defense situation, then, yes, I believe you should be trained. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like public schools. Like, you know, we're having a lot of issues here in South Bend. Sure. And so they're, they're, they're actually bringing in, because they can't even get enough cops to show up, they're hiring out to a private security form potentially. Right. But, like, even the Christian schools around here, most, I would say, if not all the Christian schools, they're armed campuses. Like, you can't just walk into a school and expect to light it up. Right. And so do I think churches should have security teams to protect and defend? Yes, but I also don't think that everyone should just be walking in with their revolver on their hip either. You know, so that's, nilly. But also depends where, that's a hard thing because that's where, where you live. Well, and that's where if you're a rancher in Texas, that's what you do. But that's, again, we come back to the, it's in this country, it's a right. Right. It's a right that you can, I can open carry here in Indiana with nothing. I just I got a background check to get my gun. Yeah, you set that up. Well, you have, to have it up. You have to have an open carry permit, though, in no. Indiana, don't you? No, I think you Indiana. do. No, you sure? Positive. Look it up. No, I, I, I got oh. a text, a long text. <laughs> I'm not really sure. From Beth? No, from oh. my mother. Oh, oh. So let's yeah, let's let's so, move on. But so so but so so to answer the question, should Christians? train and defend themselves i would say if they want to own a gun then the answer is yes right and even for me like i've had i haven't been trained but i've been taught here's how you shoot here's how you load here's how you should properly point you should not be pointing the gun up willy-nilly right so i've i've at least have experience with it keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to but does every christian and this is the thing is like even like the, I'm thinking like, okay, there's Christians who are cops. Right. There's Christians who are want to be cops. There's Christians who are want to be hard nosers. There's sure. Christians that want to be the punishers. Sure. And I'm like, and my question is like, why do you want to carry? It? Oh, for my own protection, or is it because you want to look cool? like? Is there really an active threat you're trying to defend yourself against? So in this day and age, there is a quite a bit of an active threat. I mean, we see it quite often. I don't know how much you've watched about serial killers and all this other stuff, but there's an active threat. Like if if you really dig into it and see y'all, I mean the sex traffic ring and all sorts of stuff. Even here at the Walmart and in, in, in the South side, I think it was two years ago or last year. Um, there was a person that was trying to abduct a woman going out to her car right here on the South side, 10 minutes down the road from this church. And all she was doing was walking her car after shopping. Mm. So there, there is a real threat. So I, I, this is where I said, I see both sides of the fence. Mm-hmm. 
I see that, okay, do you really need to? But then I see, yeah, I, some people, yeah, you in this day and age, you probably should. Um, it's turning into the Wild West in this country. But, uh, yeah. So here's the next question, then. If the government said turn in your guns, what would you do? Oh, man. This is a hard one. I ain't one. got no gun to turn in. This so. is a hard one. Um, I would say, first of all, um, they would, I would, I would require them in this country, in this country, because I am a citizen, just like Paul invoked his rights, I would invoke my rights. I would say, nope, that goes against my Second Amendment right. And until that was ruled out by the Supreme Court and gone all through the channels, which would take a long, long time, I would not turn it in. But if it came down that, nope, it's gone through all this and you have to turn it in. I'd probably go hide for the hills. <laughs> I mean, me personally, I don't know. It's hard for me to say, yeah, I'm going to hand over my weapon. It, it really is. Um, again, I'm on the side of the fence where I probably would not hand over my weapon necessarily. And there's a lot of people in this country where once that would happen, they would invoke their Second Amendment right to rise up and fight the government. Well, and, and that's every oath that uh, um, our personnel and, a lot of people, and the military take and, and the police officers take. It's to defend... America, so the citizens of this country, both foreign and domestic, mm -hmm. which means against ourselves. This is why we had a civil war, because there was some civil stuff that was going on. So this was a domestic dispute. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that that is part of their oath and that they there should be a rising up if it goes against the rights of the foundation of this country and it hasn't gone through the proper channels up. To be changed. But then how do we handle, you know, Christians in Rome who were burnt at the stake, who were captured sure. and thrown into the lion, uh, thrown into the Colosseum sure. and eaten by lions, sure. or the entire family units? Sure. Well, Paul was, you Paul know? was, uh, cru was it crucified? No. Uh, there's or different beheaded? theories, but. I'm trying to know. remember which one. Yeah. But, but no, no, but, but, but most people don't believe Paul was crucified, but like Regard Peter, Andrew. Regardless, Paul was killed. Right. Right. So, I mean, every, he was a Roman ev citizen. every of one of the 12 disciples was. But. He he, he took his rights and went to the nth degree with his rights. So much so that he spent years in Rome waiting to appear before Caesar because that was his right as a Roman citizen. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. But he, he also still stayed in prison the whole way. He wasn't sure, just hanging sure. out and having a good time at the coffee shop, you know? No, sure, sure. So, yeah. He was in prison because that was part of. I mean, that was part of the process. Right, but here's the other question, though. But why did Paul want to appeal to Caesar? Well, because to he, defend his right as a Roman. No, he used it to bring him the gospel. That's but what that's not goal. what I can guarantee. Most people sure. who are gun owners sure. will not use that reason. It's the fact of this is my right. But regardless of the reason up. of it, he, no, not sit down, shut. But you know what I mean. Like regardless of the reasons. reason why Paul was doing it, he right. still invoked a right. Right. So he still said, "Hey, I, I got a valid right here." And so, to me, you got a right. You have the option to invoke that right until and it's a right gone, to be heard. Until it's gone through the proper channels and processes, and then after that, then. But in order to inv to have that, but I'm also on the side where it's like, okay, if you want to use that right to appeal before people, do you obey and then, or do you resist and fight? I think you make them. It's like this: you have the right to remain silent, right? Mm -hmm. So they say, well, I'm taking away that. Anything can be used. I'm taking away that right. You have to tell me everything right now. What are you going to do? Are you going to obey and, and tell him everything? No, I'm going to wait for my lawyer to show up. Okay, so you invoked a right, and you said, no, you're going to follow the proper channels. I'm invoking my right, and you're going to follow the law. Mm -hmm. Same with the guns. They, had, they do not have a right to infringe upon you. You have the right to bear arms. So you have that right until it goes through the proper channels where that right is no longer valid. Mm -hmm. And and I agree, and I so, and I and I do agree with that, and and I've thought I've gone back and forth on on this one a lot because it's a hairy issue. I told I'm telling you, this, this is one that's like a, there's a lot of points of this issue where I'm undecided, and I feel one way, but that feeling could change because I'm not solidified in that. These are just where I'm at today. So if Christians serve in the military police force, which is another big, big Anabaptist sure. Mennonite sure. belief, uh, oh, I don't think I, I think Brethren churches though don't believe this. But if a Christian serves in the military or a police force, and some people even say politics in general, you have lost your, uh, uh, you, you've lost the opportunity to be an elder in the church because you, it, you, you can still be a member and active and we'll love you and you're part of the body, but you won't be an elder because you used your hands for this rather than for spiritual matters. 
negative because elders are supposed to be the spiritual leaders of the church. Sure. It's kind of, and and they, they 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 do the same approach with David and Solomon, where sure. David goes, or, or where God told David, "Your hands are covered in blood, so you won't build my house." But Solomon mm-hmm. will. But his hands were covered in blood because of a selfish, prideful murder that he did. It was an act of murder. It wasn't an act of self defense. Was that the reason, or was it because he was? A, I think oh, he, I don't no. think that was. The oh reason, no, was it, it was because he had Uriah killed. That same reason why he lost his son th- from Bathsheba, and and it was he had m- blood on his hands from the killing Uriah, and so that's why he was not allowed to build the house for God, and his son would do it. But to me, could if Christians serve in the military police force, should they be allowed to be elders in the church? I think yes. I think that um, there's no stipulation about what your positioning is um, and where Christ can use you. I feel like Christ, we've talked about this. I feel like Christ can use you as a you know state representative, as a state senator, president of the United States. You can be used anywhere. Um, you could be a leader in the church and have positions um, I, I am, I'm okay with this. I'm mm. okay with, um, with you being military or police and, and being an elder in the church. And, and, and I do too. And I'm actually reading through it and it wasn't just that, but God said, you have spilt much blood on this earth. And so it's the fact of, yeah, I mean, obviously innocent blood, sure, but also just this, but what did David do? He didn't sit there and go, ah, shucks. Like, let's move on. He actually gathered the materials and did the plans and Solomon was the one who built it. Right. But, which I, I just think is interesting. Um, next one: If a government becomes, uh, you know, too much, t- uh, t- Ty- tyrannical. Yeah, I, I have a hard time that word. Um, if, if 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 tyranny breaks loose, um, should Christians rise up and join the rising up to fight the government, like the Constitution says, it's our right to do? So this is uh, the big one, right? So well, I would say even the big one is just is the Second Amendment biblical at all? So the Second Amendment, the right to bear arms. I don't think it's biblical. I think that's just the way the, the founding fathers wrote it. I think, it's, yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I think they also wrote it out of fear of what they used well, to have. Right. I don't think it's biblical, but I don't think it's unbiblical. It's one of those gray areas of that's just the rights that people have here. And it's not saying what you can or cannot do with oh, that right. It's just, that's just the way it's America, just you have that right. it just, it be what it be. Well, it doesn't say you have the right to take up and bear arms and take on and rise up against the government. It just says the government can't infringe on the I think it does, right. though. It just said, well, what well, you that, that was just a little bit. That, that's oh, not well, the whole see, thing. You'd have to quote it for me. Let's see. Can Americans... So while you're looking that up, I, I, I guess I'll, I'll dive yeah, into the... Um, should Christians rise up and fight against the government like, you know, people want to do all the time? Um... <sighs> I do not see the early church rising up against Rome. I saw the zealots of the Jewish cult rising up against Rome. And si- one of the, I mean, one of the disciples, Simon, was one of those zealots, which sure, is very interesting sure. to think about that Jesus chose him. You know, right? But Jesus called them out of the zealousy. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't see the early church rising up to fight. Um, I actually don't see the church fighting until the uh crusades right and some of those like you and know I they, they talk about the knights templar like the sure. original reason why the knights templar were there was to protect pilgrimages sure people went back and that's and different and i'm okay with that i'm mm-hmm. okay with Me too, protecting that's the government you're guarding setting up people now they did it as part, part of holy orders which i think is a little weird it is weird but it was a different time period back then too where the church had a, a more powerful role in government and so i think that um my personal belief, and I know it's a very unpopular belief, is that our kingdom is not of this earth. I am not an American citizen as much as I am a citizen of the kingdom of God. And that's where my loyalty should lie. Um, I love the country, and I'm a, I am thankful God put me in this country to be able to use me in this country for this time. But I do not believe that my allegiance should be to this country. My allegiance should be to God, and I do and and go where he sends me. And whether that's here, whether that's Africa, whether that's the Middle East, that's where I go. Wherever God sends me, that's uh, that's my home. That's my mission field. Um, I'm an ambassador, and an ambassador doesn't mean citizen. We are no longer citizens of this world. We are citizens of a heavenly kingdom and ambassadors to this world. 
and I take that calling very, very serious. Um, I was born as an American. I'm considered an American citizen, but I consider myself a citizen of the kingdom of God, and that's where my loyalty lies. Mm. And and someone might need to, because I'm Googling it right now. Here, you talk. You give your thoughts on well, it. Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm Googling through it, trying to see, you know, what exactly the Declaration of Independence say. Um You know, this one quick menu says, but when a long train of abuses and use usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evicts and designed to reduce them under such deposition, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and provide new guards for their future security, such has been the patient servants of these colonies. So now it's a philosophy. Uh, I, I do so, know that overthrow a bad tyrannical government is a philosophy of... So here's the Second Amendment. Okay. It's the constitution.congress.gov. It says, A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Right. That's it. That's what the, that's what that's the, the Second sec- That is the Second Amendment. That is the Second Amendment. Um, First Amendment is Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for uh, redress of grievance. So this is where I think when the government says, hey, we're, we're taking your guns away, this is where we have the First Amendment, right? Mm-hmm. Because it says we have, uh, they cannot prohibit the free exercise thereof of abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of people to peaceably assemble, which is what we get. Um, what are they called? Uh, not, I'm thinking strikes, but that's not strikes. It's uh, not riots. What's the word I'm looking for here? Not riots, not strikes. It's where people protest. 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 Okay, Jeez. Yeah. Wow. Brain fart. Um, and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. So that means, hey, you got to deal with these grievances we have. We have that right. Mm, okay. Okay. So here you go. So this is straight from the Declaration of Independence. So this is what the, this is not the Constitution. This is what the, you know, the people wrote to over to England as a, we declare our independence and we going to fight you for sure, it. Sure, sure. So, um, well, I mean, this was 1776. So it was the, I don't know, it was, it was the backbone of a lot of things. Right. But anyway. But so, just remember the con- these amendments were amendments to the Constitution. Right. So and this is are, not the Constitution. Ca- this right. is straight from the Declaration of Independence. Sure. And it says, we hold these truths to be self evident, which we talked about, um, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Uh, that to secure these rights, governments are instituted by men derived their just powers from the consent of the governed that whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter it or to abolish it and to institute new government laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Um, and then it continues on, but when a long train of abuses and usurpations pursuing invariably the same object evinces a design to reduce them under absolute deposition, it is their right, it is their duty to throw off such a government and provide new guards for their future security, such has been the patient's sufferances of these colonies, and such is now ne- uh, necessary such the necessity which constrains them to alter their form of system of government. The history of the present king of Great Britain is a history of repeated injustices and usurpations all having direct object of the establishment of an absolute tyranny over these states. To prove this, let facts be submitted to a candid world. So in other words, they basically say in the Declaration of Independence, when you reach this point, it is the right, in fact, it is the duty of the citizens to rise up and fight that. And that's how America was born. Sure. Was we were we were born out of rebellion. Sure. And so the fact of, you know, rebellion is kind of inbred into us as Americans. Let's just be honest. Um, but how does that compare up to Romans 13? Exactly. And that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so the, the, the fact of is the Was right, America born out the, of the right spirit? Is the right to rise up against the government? Is the right to fight against the government? And, you know, they talk about the fact of, oh, we're going to, like, uh, even my buddy, he was like, dude, th- you really think a little militia is going to rise up against people with nukes? Like, come on now. Sure. But at that, the same time, though, it's the fact of if this is what the our founding fathers had and we're a Christian nation, so therefore we combine Christianity with the rights of an American. Should we have the ability to rise up against a tyrannical government, or 
do we say, nope, God gave us this government, so we need to submit and obey. And I think that's where this conversation comes to a head. Right. Well, and, and so what do we again, do? it all comes back to obeying the higher authority, right? We're called to obey the government unless it violates the laws of God, and, ask, and they're asking us to do a sin. But, but, but and that's the, when they ask us to do a sin, because what, what did the apostles said, say to the people? Like, oh, you got to stop talking about Jesus. And they're like, uh, yeah, no, we fear God a lot more than you, right. so right. yeah, no, sorry, we can't do that. Exactly. So sure. if they tell us we can't stop teaching the truth, we can't stop teaching we what the Bible no. says, then we have then I think yeah. we have the right to say no. And and this is where it gets awkward even but with COVID. That, but does that, but that, meeting in churches. But does that and, mean rise up and rebel? I I don't know. I just say I think it's the use of rights in the proper channels, the way to glorify God, which I do know, like the whole COVID shutdown case, like I mean that's this is where that argument comes from too, then of if is are they shutting down our rights to worship? Or are they just trying to be like, we're trying to protect people and not gather. We're not telling you to stop worshiping. And people had that fight. And I know some pastors who have gone through the system of the government. Like I know John MacArthur sure. won a court case against the state of California because sure. he's like, this is my right as an American. I'm going to, I'm going to use it. Sure. And so, and that's, that's where I think the situation gets hairy. Y- yes. I and, agree. Am I thankful for America? Yes. Do I think God has blessed America? Yes. Do I think America was a Christian nation founded on Christian principles? Not always. Not all of them. Uh, the majority of it, possibly. I think a lot of it came out of really ticked off dudes. Uh, I mean, not uh, Yes and no. Mm-hmm. I, I agree, but I disagree. I, I think that the principles of Christian men were there. I just don't know. I'm not. Uh, well, I not, say deists. I, I don't not, think a lot were Christian. I think a lot were just deists. That there was a higher being and higher no, power out there. No, I, I see too many writings where they actually name God and Jesus Christ and all this. So well, I, Thomas I, Jefferson does too until he blacks out all the things. <laughs> That's called a redaction. That's true. <laughs> but just because they they were Christians or some of them were Christians and were trying to do I know things some right, were, but right, but just because they were trying to do things right doesn't mean they're inerrant. Are you inerrant? Because no. I'm sure not. No. So are all your opinions right? Yep. Okay, well. <laughs> no. Case closed, <laughs> RTC, out. <laughs> Bye. But, but, but what you're saying is all true, though. Right. So just because, I mean, just because they were Christian doesn't mean that every every idea that they came out with was the correct one. But it doesn't make them any less Christians, and it doesn't make this country founded on Christian principles because there are Christian principles throughout most of our documentation for the establishment of this government. And I, and I do agree. Just, just like in my company that I work for, there are Christian procedures in there, but they don't call them Christians. Like our, our step program is straight out of scripture of, hey, first you have to go to the person if you have an issue with them. And then if they don't listen, you have to take somebody else with, with you, and then you discuss it together. That's Matthew 18, straight man. Straight up out of the scripture. And I'm like, man, these are some biblical principles, not established by a biblical company. Mm-hmm. But that's what I'm saying. You see what I mean? It's so a country established out of biblical principles doesn't make sh- make it automatically a pure Christian inerrant country. It could be led by Christian men, but not inerrant. And I think this is where a lot of the 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 thought comes from for me with the fact of you know in one sense all men are created equal. Sure. So therefore, it, one cannot have tyrannical rule over another because just because you're a king and I'm you know like sure. prince and the pauper. Sure. Just because you're a prince doesn't make you any better from? than a pauper. It's, it? it's from scripture that we're all made in the image of God. And I agree. And I agree well, not with only that. that, but hey, no person should be held in a higher office than the other. That came from that too. And so that's where it's like, okay, there's a biblical principle here. But we also know that God set up governments to do that too. Sure, sure. So it's more the fact of all men are created equal. So therefore, if you're a tyrant, we're going to rise up and shut you down, which is the French Revolution, which was awful. Silver War, so much blood was shed. Um, American Revolution, so much blood was shed. Sure. And, and so, and, and, and was that protecting, you know, and was that, was that self-defense or was there, were those uprisings, you know? Sure. Like we call it Independence Day, whereas, you know, England will call it, you know, it, it's not Independence Day over there, you know? And it's the same for like when we talk about the Reformation, the Great Reformation of sure. the Protestant Reformation, the, the Catholic Church do not call it the Reformation. It's the Great Dissension, right? I, I think um, the Great Schism was the Roman Catholics and either Eastern Orthodox. So when it comes to this, though, you know the fact of Christians and guns, 
I think it's fair to say and lean into the fact that I'm American, so I have rights because you gave them to me for being being born in this country. So I don't think it's wrong for someone to step into those rights. Mm-hmm. But, you know, Paul stepped in those rights in order to make God's name known. Sure. Now, at the same token, he also held those officials are liable for what they were required to do. Sure. So if someone steps into this and all of a sudden it's like, mm, you're, you're going out of line here because this is, this is what the law says. Right. And you know, with, with Americans, we have the ability to, if we don't like something, people also, but if you don't like it, go change it at the polls, right. which a only go so far. Let's be honest. Sure. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's nothing wrong with protests, and there's nothing wrong with, in my opinion, speaking out of no, what you want to do. No, because that is the First Amendment That's right. The That's right. another right that was given. Right, to but us at being the same token, here. don't take away the right of somebody. Now, of course, you can't sure. be in a building and yell fire. Like that's 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 not helpful. Sure, there's stipulations. Correct. And so, but with this issue specifically of Christians and guns, as a American, yes, we have the right to bear arms. But just because you have the right doesn't mean you have to. Well, there's. You have the right, but remember how you use that right. You have to answer to God. And I think that's the thing is the fact of are you are you putting all your faith and hope and trust in this gun to protect you, or are you putting all your faith and hope in God? And it's just one way that you're able to, because that's what Nehemiah did. And I don't think it's so black and white. No, no, no. But when you look at Nehemiah, he wasn't he, trusting in the sword to defend Jerusalem. He, he was defending it. in God, but he still held it. But he held the sword everywhere right. he went. But they were also being physically attacked 24-7, sure. sure. you know what I mean? And, and and so when I hear about, like, back in the day when these uh, circuit rider preachers were, you know, they'd ride by themselves on horseback through the wilderness. Carrying guns. They carried guns. Yep. And it was for protection against wild beasts, wild animals, sure. bears, wolves, whatever. Sure. And from people who robbers, thieves, robbers right. and thieves and, and Murderers, whatever. And I whatever. think that's fair. And so the question is, as us, should we have the right to do it? Yes, but... If the government says you can't open carry in this state, great. As American, you have the ability to leave that state if you want. Sure. And if you don't, or abide by the laws. You have the ability. There's a court system right. to say, hey, I have this right. It's in the Constitution. It's in the amendments. Or, you know, So you have the right to fight it legally. Mm-hmm. And, and if you do that, I will say that you will be uh, – Christians who disagree with you will go at you and go sure, after you. Sure. But I and I think it's fair if a church says we want to have an armed security team. Now, the thing I like about our church is our guys are also all CPR certified. They're they're also watching out for the kids. So they're not just trying to walk around and shoot somebody's lights out in case there's an active shooter. Right. They're literally the fact of and I know our security team feels this, the fact of you're trusting us to you give us your kids and then you leave. Right. This is our responsibility. If anything happens, we have to answer for it. And right. we want to make sure that we do everything in our power to do that. And so sure. I think that is a correct mindset. Right. So do I think guns and protections and security teams in churches are okay? I do. I don't actually like it, though. If you're not part of the security team, leave your gun at home. I'm also a big believer in that. Or leave it in your car. And, again, that's coming from a city boy. But, yeah, is that so responsible, though, leaving it in your car where somebody could break in, grab the gun. Now they have a weapon to charge in with. Right. And so it's true. To me, to leave it at home. that's, well, but it's their rights. And it's not infringing upon any laws of God or this government. Right. And But if a pastor requests, like, hey, we only want people with firearms that, we, like, that have gone through our training in this church, is that fair for a pastor to say? Um, it would be fair for him to say, but not necessarily fair for him to enforce without the backing of the eldership board. Yeah, and I don't know what the rules are in the government about that. I, I really don't know. Uh, I don't think they can. I don't think you can. I, can, I don't think you can say no. You, you can just say I, we. This is what we because prefer. if you're allowing some and you're not allowing others, it's called discrimination. And I will say, but if a pastor says that, is it our right to humbly? submit to that elder sure sure you know? I, but again i think there's a process behind it or else we'd have a dictatorship in the pastoral ship right so there 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 can be a hey let's talk about this hey i want to get the other or you're, in like, or the fact and, and that's the or thing i have our, the, or have the right to leave and the nice thing with our security team and and because i don't want my kids to walk around thinking these guys have guns i don't know what's going to happen but see but that, our security team always that's a misconception because of lack of training and guns in the home. People are scared of tools. If I grabbed a hammer and carried a hammer around, are you going to be scared of that hammer? No. Why? Because it's a hammer that you hammer nails in because you're on a job. But there's been 
j- almost just as many killings with the hammer as there has been with knives and other weapons. So why aren't you scared of the hammer? Because it kills just about as many people as guns. But you're not it's scared probably of the hammer. also the fact that a gun can kill someone from long distance. But what? But you know? oh, okay, so so it's a, it's a it's a legitimate scary thing. Sure, you hear of stray bullets, you don't hear of stray hammers. But, well, okay, I, I get that. But you're not scared of a hammer, are you? Nope. It kills. Uh, I mean, I we, got, can look, we can look up the statistics. I got four of them at home. But you're not scared of it because you're used to the tool. Mm-hmm. If you were brought up and used to the gun, which is a tool, and knew how to properly handle it. You wouldn't be as scared of it. I'm not scared of it. I'm not scared of a gun, and I'm, I'm, I don't want my kids to fear a gun. Because guns aren't scary. It's the people that have the guns that are scary. It's true. It's true. But I think the scary thing is if you want to kill me with a hammer, you've got to be close. Right. But if... if But a gun, literally someone can fire it in the air, and then who knows if, what happens. If Scott, and I don't know if Scott owns a gun or carries a gun or not. I but know. I, mean, I know he Scott, doesn't carry If one. Scott carried a gun, I would not be scared that Scott carried a gun. Why? Because I trust Scott. Mm-hmm. If an unknown person carries a gun, I'm going to be on my guard because I don't know that person. Mm-hmm. But I'm not scared of the gun. I'm scared of the person. Right. Not the gun. The gun can't do anything. And that's why I actually think it's okay for an elder team to be like, we we, we really only want people who are trained. Do you realize carry. that at any moment somebody could push a button and kill you, uh, all of America right now? Uh-huh. It's called nuclear bombs. Mm-hmm. That should be more scary than anything because of the people who have them. Right. And I agree with that. But... But without the people pushing the button, they're just inanimate objects that don't do anything. Mm-hmm. And, and I agree with that. But the problem is, is there's so much sin in the world, and that's where that question comes is, you know, you catch anyone on a wrong day, sure. at a wrong moment, sure. on a chair I, trigger. Sure, I kill you with this this right here. That would suck if you kill I kill you with that. anything in this room. I mean, I kill you with the chair and be plunging you to death. Right. It's all about the, But So I can't be scared of every little object that's around. Mm-hmm. I have to just be on guard of the person that's around. And that's the mindset that needs to be switched in this country. It's not any, I can kill you with anything. I can kill you with a pencil. <laughs> it's true. Throw it through your eye and you're done. I watch Batman. Yeah, exactly. You see the Joker. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, and that, and that's the retraining. We want to abolish one thing, but not other things. You right. know, automobiles kill more people than guns, but nope. you still drive a car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true you take that risk all the, all the time so i it's just i mean and uh, let me tell you something people are stupid out there and un, unintentionally but they hurt people unintentionally but they hurt people mm-hmm. that's scary and that's why i reckless. go back to you know it's when it's our time it's our time sure you know if we want to base our stuff on off nehemiah sure he did it, yeah to protect his people and he sure. set up guards and sure. all these different things because there was active people actually dying mm-hmm. and i would i mean if there's active people all over the place 24 7 dying all around me yeah. well yeah I'm gonna, I'm gonna have some yeah. but at the same time you know this is where it gets hairy is the fact of on both sides there's extremes and both they i think both extremes are uh, wrong to be honest with you, anything yeah. on the far extremes, I think are not helpful, sure. it, but it's more of, you know, on the middle ground of what's safe, what's fair, what's American, what's Christian. I get nervous when I see people fighting for more, they put more energy into gun and gun rights than they ever have with actually the gospel and the kingdom. Oh, I you know, I think that's where I struggle. Sure. I think that's where I actually and I, and struggle. And I'm, th- I'm right there with you. I think it's wrong. I think Christians should be more focused on the gospel and taking the gospel out into the world than they are on, on the rights of that they may or may not be losing. Mm-hmm. Let the people that aren't saved fight that fight. I mean, there's enough patriots that aren't saved around here. And then I'm not saying that, that, you know, Christians shouldn't be because Daniel sure. was involved. With sure. Government. And, and, and I'm fine with ago. that too, but I'm saying our main focus shouldn't be that. Our Make main calling f- sure. Sure. So, but I also don't want people to forget that a gun in the hands of nobody is an inanimate object mm-hmm. and a rock in the hands of a murderer will kill you. And I agree with that sentiment. I, I 100% agree with that ses- sentiment. It's more the fact of, are you putting your trust in, in your faith, in your protection in the gun sure. or in God. Sure. And you have the gun as protection, but that's not what you're ultimately sure. praying for. You know? Sure. I think, that, that, I think that's where I'm And that applies that. to every aspect of life, oh, 100%. though. 100%. I mean, for income, for stress levels. I mean, it, oh, then you're talking to me right now. It, oh, I wasn't <laughs> much. I'm saying it applies to all. I mean, driving my car. I tell my daughters, and, and Noel will say this all the time, Daddy, you coming home tonight? Yep. If Jesus lets you come home, I said, yes, ma'am. If, if God, Jesus wills that I be home tonight, 
and I make it back to you, I'll be home. If not, I'll be with Jesus. And she knows that at three and a half years old. Hey, I come back because of the will of God. That's it. It's the only thing that protects me. It's not my time. And I think that's a good way to end it is the fact of both you and I are very God wills what God wills. He does not. He's not the author of evil. He uses it for his glory and, and his purpose. And he, he allow, but I like to say he, he allows, allows it. <laughs> and, but we also see that God uses tyrannical people to, to literally sure. redirect his people, like Babylon and, sure. and the Persians and the Medes. Like he uses and he hard, bad he hardens governments hearts. in order to do it, in order to bring people back to him. Yeah. Right. And, right. And it's something that we don't understand and we never will, but that's okay. I mean, it's hard to understand it. It's yeah. hard to be okay well, with it. Well, we're not God, so. We're not God. I Sometimes I tell everyone. my kids, you know, you'll the whole you'll know when you're older. It's I hated that as a kid, but it's true. Yep. All yep. right, let's wind this down because we're at almost an hour and a half. How about we just jump to fun facts? We well, I think we gave our fun. Yeah, I think we I gave think, our thoughts. Ready for some fun facts? Let's do, let's do it. Time for fun facts with Fiddler. <laughs> How about this, dude? So I don't know what the fun fact is. So I'm gonna eat my peanut, my my peanut M and M's while you do some fun facts. Yeah, I know you. You, uh, that's just. Yeah. Oh, you're crazy, bro. Yeah, mm. I know. All right, give me All the right, fun, fun fact. fact I, of the I day. don't know what this one is either. Two so for two. I don't know what they are. Before the 1800s, people had a first and a second sleep. Wait, 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 wait. Back up. Say that again. Hey, you can't talk with your mouth full. You got to be quiet now. Sorry. <laughs> but back that up. I I like this idea. Before the 1800s, people had a first and second sleep. They would no, you are not gonna like it right now. Okay. They okay. would sleep three to four hours. Oh no! Mm-mm. Wake up for two to three hours. No, do do some sort of activity and then go back to sleep until morning. But why? So if you went to bed at nine, I you, guess that's what I did on Tuesday. I went to bed at you, eight, woke up at ten, and was up okay. at two. So that if, was awful. So if you wake, if you go to bed at nine, so my typical bedtime during the week is nine o'clock. I'd have to wake up at one, stay up till three or four. And then go back to sleep for a couple more hours and then wake back up. Nah, let, let, let this guy sleep through the night. I like you sleep for eight hours or seven hours. And then around one o'clock, you take an hour nap. And then you wake up and you go again. That's what I like. I like my naps. I enjoy my naps. We all can't work from home. Oh, I'm talking about Sunday afternoon, bro. This ain't working from oh, home. Oh, Sunday, yeah. Nappy. Sunday afternoon nap. Give me the nappy. Oh, my goodness. You know what? I'm kind of curious to hear from our people if Sunday ap- are, are Sunday naps a thing. Right. Everywhere, because you know what, Sunday naps are different. You go church with the family, good lunch. Come you, lunch, I turn on a football game, I fall asleep. It's like Thanksgiving. <laughs> oh, um, I turn on octonauts and I fall oh, asleep. That's what go. we do. But either way, guys, we know this conversation went long, so we hope you're here with us towards the end because this is a big conversation. This is and like it, an unbelievable conversation. <laughs> I feel like it, but it's, it, instead of two different people coming out with pitted arguments, we're trying to just. What do Christians do, man? We're trying yep. to work this out. And right. that's what I like about this, our our specific, sometimes with these questions, is you and I, we we, we work this out on the fly, bro. Right. Yep. So, But you know what? The conversation, we always say, never ends. It continues. So if you guys have any other thoughts on this matter, we know some of you guys are going to have a lot of thoughts on this one. Yeah. Feel free to email us, text us, call DM us. us, call us, text us, whatever you got to do. But reach out to us because we want to continue the conversation with you. So hit us up, realtalkchristianpodcast.com. I'll take you to every link you need to go. I got peanut M&M stuck in my throat. That's what happens. When Facebook, Instagram, leave us a voicemail, text. Um, you can email us at RealTalkChristianPodcast at gmail.com and find all the information about us, the show, or other episodes, and the show notes all at RealTalkChristianPodcast.com. That's it, bro. That's it? That's you, a, you, it. you don't want to add anything? You're good, man. Normally, you add like the CSB or the yeah, store you know, or whatever. I like to switch it up every once in a while. You know, you can call us at 574-400-5352. Again, 574 574- Four zero zero five three five two. And you never know when we might call you back. You never know. I'm eating more peanut M and M's. This is really good. We're just, Halloween candy for the win, bro. We're just very random with our callbacks and peanut M M's. Peanut M and M's and callbacks. That's how we do in RTC. That's you right. will never know what we're going to talk about, and sometimes we don't even know we're talking about those exactly. two days before. But just like always, every Thursday, wow, it's hard to talk peanut M and M's. Every Thursday, we drop that new episode six thirty Eastern Standard Time. So I guess that wraps up this episode, huh? Yes, sir. So, cool. Until next time then, guys. Take it easy.